Before 9 o'clock, thank you for tuning in this Friday. And I am not, I don't like to think I am anyway, I'm not a, I'm not a name dropper. But M- Tobin Wagstaff is my friend. <laughs> Tobin Wagstaff is my friend. He was uh, one of my Facebook friends, and uh, he is the name you've been hearing about, the father in the family, and uh, also the founder of Studio Percussion. And they are going to be featured on the TV show this coming Sunday, this weekend, this Sunday evening. I think the show is at 8. It's the Extreme Makeover show that ABC has been putting on. It's touched my heart many times when I've watched it before. And, and now I actually get to see a uh, home, not only of, uh, of a guy that I've so, sort of got to know through Facebook. I've never met Tobin in person, to be honest with you. Um, but we share something. He's got a love for music and, in fact, uh, has experienced extended that love of music to his whole community uh, through something he has created with his wife called Studio Percussion. So let's say, go- and you got to play with Kiss, too, by the way. So. <laughs> yeah. Tobin <laughs> Wagstaff, good morning, Tobin. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Good. You're up in Gainesville right now? I'm in Gainesville. I'm actually at Studio Percussion right now, so oh. I can be somewhere quiet when I spoke with you guys. Oh, awesome. Now, let me, let me ask you about Studio Percussion first. How far back does that go? Well, um, the, the concept for Studio Percussion and, uh, I guess, uh, the official origins of Studio Percussion uh, goes back to uh, 2002, about June. And what was, what was the idea? Is there a mission statement, that whether it's written down or, or just... You know, there's, there's the, you know, the gen- generic mission statement that we have on our website, but, um, you know, and I'm, ba- I'm a bad boy because I don't have that memorized, but, um, <laughs> but, but, but the, general, the general idea is this, is that we're an art... Uh, community-based charitable organization, and what we try to do is, if if someone's interested in participating in something artistic, if we have a way to provide that to that person, then that's what we do. And um, you know, we, we have like any business, we have expenses and stuff, so there is tuition involved. But what we do is we work with people to make sure that that we we can meet them where they are. And you know, if they have a, a hard time affording tuition, we work with them on that. And you know, we don't turn anybody away because of money. And that's the thing that's special about what we do. We don't have a pot of money that subsidizes the cost of, uh, you know, people taking lessons here or being involved in the artistic opportunities that we provide. But what we do is, you know, we, we find a way to plug them in, and regardless of how much money could be in a pot that you, you know, might give, uh, the way that a lot of other scholarship programs tend to work with other charities. And did you do it out of your house? Um, we started out in our house. Okay. And, uh, N- and no longer in your house, obviously. <laughs> you have a separate location now, right? Are you there? Sorry, I just, yeah, I'm sorry. So I just interrupted me. <laughs> My bad. Um, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Well, question? the question was: is stu- the actual studio. Now, this is, is like a school. Now, who who is typically the student? Is it the, a child? Um, we do a lot with children, um, but but it's children and adults. And um, I, I do remember your previous question. We we started the business out of the house in 2002, and, and what we did is. Um, you know, we grew pretty rapidly. Um, you know, we were just doing one one on one lessons for about the first year or so, and then we started doing our group classes. And then at that point, we started um, getting involved in a commercial location, and um, we've really just kind of blown up since then. And you know, in our current space, we've pretty much maxed out the amount of people that we can you know deal with. Is your wife also a drummer? Um, she wouldn't call herself a musician, but she's a musician, but she's more of a dancer than a musician. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, uh, you know, she's, she's been all, you know, you know she's, she's an artist. You know, if you think of someone who's a true artist, she's really a true artist. She's very creative. Um, she's very good with, uh, you know, dance and, and movement and music, but she's also great with, um, you know, things like uh, painting and drawing and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and so she, you know, I, I don't really consider myself an artist. I'm more of a technician. I know how to do stuff. Um, but I'm not very creative, and she brings a lot of the creative side to what we do, and I kind of, you know, as a technician, try to make some of it happen. Oh, that's very sweet. And and as a, a school, um, did studio percussion, um, w- were you, like, re- regularly involved in recitals? Like, did you put on public performances with the students? Yeah, that was pretty important for, to us from the beginning, and... You know, but the you know we kind of do this with a twist. We we try to not ever do anything the way anybody else is doing it, and that's hard to do because there's a lot of stuff out there. But you know, your typical student recital might be, you know, you're in an auditorium, everybody's dressed up all fancy, and yeah, yeah. you know they're performing pretty traditional uh, pieces of music. And we wanted to get away from that. We didn't want to set ourselves up to be pigeonholed into doing that sort of thing. So basically, what we do is with our members is. 
you know, we ask them what they want to do and how they want to go about it, and then we try to make it work. So we try to get creative with how we do our performances. And, you know, we do, I guess, something of like the traditional concert or recital from time to time. But what we try to do more than that is go out in the community and perform for other people. Um, we do, like, the Spring Arts Festival downtown in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. um, we do things for other charities, you know, when they have special events or fundraisers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We have groups that play at sporting events. So we, we do a lot of different things. And you're very eclectic because you do run the uh, gamut from teaching music theory to allowing the students the creativity that they have in their hearts because that has to work together. You can't have one or be one without the other. You've got to let your creative expression shine through. Yeah, we're really uh, an organic organization. Um, and the idea behind that is, you know, it's not just we're, you know, me and Jill, we're not sitting here telling people what to do and how to go about it. You know, we really find out from the people involved with us, you know, how they want to go about things, and, and, and we do it that way. So, you know, as people come and go, the, the face of the organization changes a bit. And, and so we're always looking to just do what the people want to do and be creative about it and have a good time. And, and that's what it's all about anyway, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, Tobin had uh, sent... You, you send out like invitations to uh, be, come up to Gainesville to be part of a jam session now and then. Mm -hmm. Robert and I are musicians also, um, but we're not percussionists. We're not drummers. So we I play guitar and, and uh, Robert and I sing, and we do it for children and for uh, in like a nursing home kind of gigs, you know, typically. But so you sent an invitation one time, and I said to Robert, "You want to go?" And then I well, I thought, well, "What are we going to do? <laughs> we'll just yeah. strum a guitar or something?" <laughs> I mean, do you ever have people come to those jam sessions that are not drummers? Um, yeah, actually, um, we do something uh, once a month called Family Jam Night, and this was something that originally started as Family Drum Night, because back, you know, in, in the early days, we were focused mostly on drums, because that's what I do, Right. Um, but since then, we've, we've expanded into a lot of other things, but um, with our Family Jam Night, what we do is we have a bunch of drums, but we also have, you know, an actual jam uh, set up, and um, you know, it's, it's kind of a cool opportunity because people can come and check out instruments and play on them for the first time without being told what to do. Some people like to have that opportunity. And then th that same evening, there are opportunities to do structured things. You know, we'll set up little activities and jams and uh, let people play together. And, and to my knowledge, it's the only family-friendly jam that isn't, you know, that's a regular ongoing thing. And it's definitely not at a, you know, a smoky bar. Yeah. Yeah. So... So it's a unique opportunity, and um, you know, people do come to that. And you know, we have that once a month. You guys should come sometime. Well, I would, I would love to. Uh, Tobin Wexteff is our guest. He's the uh, founder of Studio Percussion, and uh, he's also on, in the news right now because of the fact that he and his family had a new home built for them by ABC, by, mm -hmm. by, by the volunteers who came up for the Extreme Makeover uh, program. We'll get to see it on Sunday. We're not allowed to ask you about the inside. Mm -hmm. You know what I told the audience and Robin? We had an interview one time with. Uh, What's what's the Muppets name again? Elmo. 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 <laughs> Elmo. And, and, he and, was fun too. And the people, the, the the attorneys or whatever, they sent us a note. You cannot ask Elmo certain questions, and one of them was, "Are Bert and Ernie gay?" Yeah. <laughs> so so this is the, this is the only second time I've ever been told by a network, "Do not yes. ask." Yes. <laughs> So I'm not going to ask. I'm not going. Well, I don't care if you tell me if Bert and Ernie are gay, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to ask what's inside the house. Yes, yes. But, but let's talk. But let's talk about that um, experience for you. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say this: that I think they picked a really wonderful couple and family because you are really leaders in the community, um, and you deserve it. I, I really, when I looked at who was getting it and realized what you were doing all this time with your wife. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world. And and the people who get the homes who've had tragedies, I mean, it makes sense for them too. But it, And that's it kind of runs the gamut on that show. They pick homes and who knows how they choose who they choose. But in, in Tobin's case, I mean, he now he's, I'm hoping, and he can, Are you? do you feel like you're more able to give what you've been wanting to give than you ever were before? You know, I, I really do feel that way. Um, you know, on, on one hand, we know that the publicity and, and all the attention and, and, of course, the physical help in actually having a house, it, it should definitely kind of give us a step up into furthering our mission and vision with studio percussion and the other things that we do in our community. Um, but on the other hand, you know, the show hasn't aired yet. You know, it's Friday, show airs Sunday, yeah. and we'll see what happens after Sunday, too. Um, I'm really excited to see people's reactions. I'm really excited to see um, doors open and, and how we might be able to uh, capitalize on the situations for our cause.